Good evening. My name is Thurman Greco, and I am just so excited about this show. This is uh, Let's Live in Woodstock, and it's coming to you this evening with a very, very special guest. We had you on when? About a year ago? I believe so. It was about a year ago. We had Avi Guile on. Avi Guile, I mean, you know, there are those of us who read the tarot cards or do whatever. Avigail wasn't content to just do that. Avigail had to come up with her own deck. So here we are this evening, Avigail's book and her deck, and she it's twice as big as the last version, <laughs> which is a really great thing because Avigail is working as a writer. You know, when you begin to write something, you come up with something, and then you kind of work with it and you change it, and you improve it, and then finally you come up with another version. I was reminded by um, Louise Hay. Louise Hay wrote a book many, many years ago called Heal, Heal Your Life. Heal Your Life. She wrote four versions of that book. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And all four versions of that book were sold until until at beyond her death. So you heard, there were people who liked the first version, some who liked the second version, and here we have. Is this the second or third version of your cards? This is the second version. It's actually the same images, just produced larger. So the cards are the same. It's just there. The quality is better. Well, I think also that once. Once you make changes, the energy also changes, you know? I think so, because you can really see more detail, and the colors are more vibrant. Uh, they're more pigment rich. The ratios are slightly different. Um, it's more of a, was a technical uh, improvement. Now, Abigail, tell me first a little bit about the book. Did the, did the cards come first, or did the book come first? It was sort of like lasagna, you know, oh, kind of no. like you put one layer on and then you <laughs> put another layer on and then it all gets mixed together. So uh, I started just with the energy of the Hebrew letters and I, I whittled the chapters down, which were too long, and then I said, okay, I'm going to have this format. And then I had images that came with it but maybe the chapter was done and the image would come later. And this is over a course of 16 years. <laughs> wow. So, and they, they didn't come in order. The first uh, card that I did, what really started the entire deck, was this card, the letter Gimel. Now, how did, tell me how that one surfaced. Well, I was preparing for my bat mitzvah back in 1992. And uh, my teacher, Cantor uh, uh, Robert Michaelis Formis, um, pointed out that um, there were camels in, my, in the section of the Torah that I was reading, the Parsha, which is Chai Sarah. And uh, Rebecca waters 10 camels. And this is after the servant comes to her, it's Abraham's servant. And he comes to her and he asks her to just for water for himself. And camels drink a lot of water. So to give water to 10 camels when it was a man who asked for water for himself is a huge, huge mitzvah. It's a really good deed. And the waters actually rose up to her, which shows that she was a, a holy person. And the servant knew that that was a sign from God that she was to marry um, his master's son, Isaac. So pictured here is the cod, the vessel that she used to carry the water, which are the waters of Torah, which are the universal waters, could be the womb, the waters of the, in the womb of life itself because Torah, the Bible the, is, the, is, is the water of life because it sustains us. 
uh, with its rich stories and lessons. And then this is God looking over, the eye of God looking, watching. And here is Rebecca on the camel on her way to meet her beloved Isaac. And also the letter Gimel is, it's like a camel. And so um, the cantor told me, you should really study those camels. They have something to tell you. So I found out that the word for camel, gamal, is also the letter gimel. And then I learned that all the letters sound like objects, that the letters didn't just come from nowhere. They are abstractions of objects. So writing, you know, started with hieroglyphics, and then it got pared down to simpler signs because more people wanted to write. So Hebrew also started for images for objects that were important to that culture, which was a very long time ago. <laughs> and then it, a lot of the letters don't look like the letters they derive, the objects they derive from. Now the, then there's also meanings. So the word uh, gamal is camel. And there's, in Hebrew, you have three letter roots and then other words that are somewhat related grow from that root. So gamal is a letter, is a, a gamal is a camel, and the camel is an animal that doesn't need to drink very much, right? They can go a long distance from the water that they have in reserve. And gimilut chasidim means acts of loving kindness. You can hear the word gamal within that. Gamal gimilut, you have the consonants are the same. So to do an act of loving kindness is to go the distance from your inner resources. So from a camel, an animal that can walk through the desert long distance, a, a person who does good deeds is like a camel that they have an inner resource that just flows out. And like Rebecca, who is an example of somebody who does good deeds. So this image brings all that, that story together. And um, from this letter, I, I just kept researching other letters, and a friend of mine, Rachel Pollock, who's uh, an expert in tarot, um, had me do a reading for her. And she really liked what I did, and she said, and, and there, this wasn't in existence at the time. I just put the Hebrew letters on pieces of paper, and I just shuffled them and put them out, assigned places in the reading, and she was blown away and she said, you have to write a book and you have to make a deck and I'll write the foreword to the book. And as you can see, she wrote the foreword to the book. So <laughs> you, were go you were studying for your bat mitzvah. Yeah. And a story motivated you to do this letter first. Yes. And then how long was it from this letter to this deck? Well, I don't really remember the year that I did this. Um, probably 98, 99, and then this book came out, I think, in 2015, 2000. It was about a 16-year project until it was all finished and the book was edited and I got it just how I wanted. Because you, you actually made each one of these illustrations yourself. Yes, in various media. Right, because so. some of them are um, threads. They are, you know, sewn. They're wool. Yeah, they're and, wool. and some of them you painted, and some of them, you know, so each one is different. And how did each one of these illustrations reveal itself to you? I would struggle with it and I'd study and sometimes the image just came to me and sometimes I, it would just appear in my mind and I knew just what to do. But over a really long 
period of time. So the letter, the illustration for Nun, which is actually a, a wool sculpture, um, that was the last one that I did. And I think I did that in 2014, maybe. And it's big, it's, it's like this big. Yeah. It's a 3D piece and it's all wool. It's wool felt. And prior to that I did Samech, which is also wool. So, um, you know, it was, they're all based on the meanings of the, the letters and the objects that they derive from and the teachings that I came up with and experiences that I had. So I, you know, each, each image has its own story on how it, it was born. <laughs> so at what point did you realize that this was what you had? Hmm. Well, I, you know, some of the illustrations perhaps I didn't like, so I got rid of them and then I, I was satisfied with them and I know, but at what it. point did you realize this is going to be um, the art for readings? I mean, at what point did you realize that you had this package, even if it wasn't finished yet? Oh, that I was going to have a deck and... Yeah. Oh, from the very beginning. I mean, once I had this image, that was it, it was like, well... You can't do just one letter. You got to do all of them. <laughs> well, now, and and you did them for readings. Yes, because people would talk to me, and I would just get messages from the Hebrew letters. So that's how I knew I had to pursue this, because it was just coming through me. Now you have things. There are things that you can do. Say. A person mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily know you. They don't live in Woodstock, mm -hmm. but they manage to get your mm -hmm. book. There are things that they can do. Well, the book has suggestions on how you can use the, the deck. And, ha and the illustrations are in the book. So um, each letter gives an overview of the um, numerical value, how to say the letter, uh, words that that letter begins with, and a little poem that I've written, or a song, and then the chapter expounds on that, and then ends with an illustration. So each letter has an illustration, and at the end of each chapter, I give a practical application as well as a spiritual application. So if you don't know it, it you know, with any tarot deck, you have divination meanings, uh, but it's always, look at the picture. What does it say to you? You know, it's really, it, like if you saw a comic in a cartoon strip without the words, you'd get a sense of what it was saying. And you can look at it like that. You're just creating a story. So you don't have to have any question in mind. You could just pick a card at random and say, well, you know, what, what's, what's this about? You know, what's happening in this picture? You know, what does this mean to me? So it's really as simple as that. You're, it's just talking to you. Cards and images are doorways. You can enter into it and see, you just see what it is. Now, did you read tarot cards before? Yes. Oh, you did? Yes. And how did you learn to read the tarot? Through Rachel. And you can't be friends with Rachel and not learn tarot. <laughs> I and mean, we were friends, and we became friends because she was getting, uh, becoming an adult bat mitzvah, as, as was I. So we were in the same class, learning how to chant from the Torah, and we became friends. And of course she read, uh, did, you know, many tarot readings for me with her own deck, Shining Tribe. And so, um, you know, of course I was going to read. And I'm a picture person, and I see things in, in pictures and in people. And I, it's a way of getting to know people and bring them out. And that's really what a reading is, is just asking questions and hearing people's stories and then seeing how they respond to the images. And it's, it's a conversation. That's the way, that's definitely the way I feel about tarot. 
Yeah. Is when you do readings, you really don't do the readings. The people do the readings. Mm -hmm. right. Of course, because it's about them. It's right. not about you. It's their story. Exactly. It's their story. It's totally about them. And yes, and a lot of people don't understand that. Yeah. That where where the focus really is. And in addition, because the letters have numerical values, you can also do a reading about your age or or um, any, any numerical, anything that's, you know, significant n numerically. So the date you were born or anything like that. Wow, the, the house date you're going to get married. You live, the or, house sure, number where sure. you live. That's what, interesting. Yeah, what, that's what, very interesting. Yeah, what can you look forward to? What do you need to focus on? And do you, how do people contact you to get a reading? Uh, they can go to the website, uh, lettersfromheaventhebook.com, and there's an email there. Where, the, where they can send mm -hmm. you an email? Yes. And now, do you do distant readings, or do you Sure, do we can meet via Zoom. Very interesting. So yeah. you work on Zoom. Oh, yeah. I actually, I did a, a reading on a, a woman's name. Um, we did it on Zoom. I just showed her the, she took out the cards, and um, while I did, oh, you know, so she had a deck. She had a deck, and it. But it doesn't matter because I have the cards too. Well. Yeah. So she, I actually have her name right here. So okay. I took, I took um, her name, which is uh, Hinda Rachel, and Hinda means deer. So we we put a deer there, and then we took the letters that spell her name. And then we did a reading on it, what it meant to her. And then I did an image that took the, the elements that attracted her in, in the cards. And we created it, we created a whole new thing. That would make a lovely birthday gift yeah. for someone, wouldn't it? Oh, and then, what happened then? Um, we, <laughs> we um, published it on metal. So it's big. It's oh, a wow. nine by yeah. So this is like a nine by twelve, um, but it can be even bigger if you wanted. Wow. So my daughter is the one who published this book and did the printing and did all the Photoshop and all of she's those a, things. Yeah, Ruby Rose, Ruby Rose Photography. Um, she's an archivist and does all kinds of computer magic, and uh, she lives in uh, Kingston. So she helped me do this. I gave her the idea of what I wanted and how big, and but she knows the Photoshop magic. How, We're a team. How has the word of this gotten out? Um, through Facebook and Instagram. Really? And this show? Sure. That's very interesting. And, and have you... T tell me about the blank cards. I'm kind of fascinated by those. Well, there's this card called Ha'ot. And in mystical Judaism, they say there's a letter that we don't know about and that it'll be revealed in the time of Mashiach, in a time of complete peace where everybody knows their purpose in life and everything in their life helps them pursue that, that goal. Well, and I don't think we have to worry about d learning that word this week. <laughs> <laughs> or this month, even. Yeah, or forever. <laughs> so we're, we're, we pray for that time to come, and it should come soon. So it can be anything, you know, uh, in your imagination of how you envision world peace and a time of peace, and when the planet is respected and loved. So that's how... Oh, and then this letter can be anything you want. Also, it can be you in the reading. You're starting out just blank, and then you can insert any of these images or whatever you want to project into it. You could put a flower on it or a picture of, of anything that you're doing a reading on. So there's that. Now, if a person contacts you, mm -hmm. can you tell us the name of the email again? It is, um, you want to go to uh, 
the letters from heaven at gmail.com the or, letters from heaven mm-hmm. the that's, letter yeah that's the email address and then the website is letters from heaven the book okay. com. and the if you want the book um, it also has my contact information here in, in the back right there yes okay so letters from heaven the book is on Facebook and oh this is not right though um, but the, the letters from heaven at gmail.com okay so if a person decides that they want to have that they want to have a reading so they contact you and then you go on zoom and how, how many cards do they pick how does how does a reading um, manifest itself with a person based on their question unless they want to do their name I also give people names so there's some people who want a Hebrew name and I can do that with them I've done that tell me about that um, it can be based on a relative or a quality because a lot of words like Shana means nice or pretty so um, you know we talk about who they are and what qualities or a person that they know and what's the Hebrew equivalent there are different ways one woman came to me and she wrote out the names of her grandchildren in English and then she said okay take the first two letters and so there were ten letters and she said make a name out of that <laughs> well, did you do it and I did and it was perfect and then I did a picture of with the Hebrew letters with the images from the Hebrew letters and I combined it into another image that reflected her Wow yeah and then uh, for a friend's 75th birthday I did I did this this is iron and hay which is 75 and um, the hay shows a woman that because hay is the fa- is five the five senses the experience of aliveness and she certainly is that my friend um, and you see that, that her feet just stimulate the world into into growing right and five fingers on the hand so I had to put a figure a figure of a woman there arms raised lots of energy and then iron also means a stream so I had this water gushing out of the ground with insights and little yuds all around because that's the divine energy and that was my blessing for her divine energy is called yud well that is the the letter yud is is the first letter in the holy name yud he vav he okay so it's the letter of spirituality and it comes it derives from a hand yad and when we read the Torah, there's this little thing on the end of a stick like this to point out the letters when you read the Torah. So Yad. And our hands, what we do with our hands or our actions, express our spiritual energy, who we really are. That's very interesting. So when a person contacts you, they come up with their own private reading based on that person. Yes, so it depends what they want. Um, you know, if they're very directed on what they want to know, um, you know, I'm getting married, um, you know, or, or I'm having trouble with my daughter or whatever, I don't know, whatever is, and they, they have specific questions, you know, what about that? we can assign cards to that or they can just randomly pick cards and what are the images saying to them or what does the inner meaning of the Hebrew letter say to them now if a person randomly chooses cards do they choose a number of cards or do they just select the cards that interest them 
it could be anything they want. If they want, you know, firstly, how long of a reading? You want a 20 minute reading? You want an hour reading? Um, we can spend a whole hour on one card, you know, if, if, that, if that appeals to them. Sometimes somebody just wants to stay with one image because it just really grabs them and it, it speaks to them. Or perhaps they want, you know, they want to do a three card reading, which would be the issue, what not to do, and what to do. Okay, so you do have some um, um, structure. Yeah, because the tarot does have structure to it. You can you can and do that. You know, I'm I I'm more of a free form kind of person. So what you do has less structure, but it can have more structure. It can, it can be either one. It depends on the person, what they want. It's all about what they want. Have you been teaching this to other people? I've given lectures on Zoom uh, for the Woodstock Jewish Congregation during this whole lockdown. Uh, we have a thing on Monday called a shtikel Torah, a little bit of Torah, a teaching. And uh, about once a month, I teach for about 15 minutes. And, Very nice. And I often, and anybody can um, tune into it. And so, there's some things I think that are saved on, on the website, with, you know, with wjcshul.org. And you can join the uh, Shtickle Torah. I'm not on all the time, just every once in a while. I'll be on again, I think, July 14th. It's, it's that Monday, so like in two weeks, I guess. Yes. Yeah. So I'll be I'll be on again because you've been scheduled, or because that's when you're volunteering, or what is the deal? Yeah, that's the schedule because we do it every Monday, and that uh, where is it? What? Yeah, I think it's this month. I have to check. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's the parsha et Hanan, which is my daughter's bat mitzvah parsha. So I'm doing it in her honor. And it seems that every time I do uh, a Parsha or a section of the Torah that's read that f the following Saturday, uh, it connects with somebody in my family. Oh, does it really? Yeah, it just, it just works out that way. Yeah. So when you work with this, what are some things, you talked to me earlier about some things. What are some things that people can do Oh, um, they can do their birthday. Okay. So they could do it by their, the year that they were born or the month and date. They could do the whole thing. So if you want to give somebody a birthday gift, you mm -hmm. could do, yeah. you could do a reading for their birthday, for and their age. Mm -hmm. Their age, oh. like this card. Yeah. You know, was, was my friend's age. Um, and, you know, what about a, Blessing someone, blessing someone with the energy of one of these cards. Like Aleph, for example. Aleph is a silent letter. It's the sound before sound. It is the primal energy of the universe. So if somebody was kind of tired, you could bless them with this, that they should have the primal energy of the universe energizing them. Can you, can you do a blessing for, say, the birth of a child, or a blessing for a wedding? Yes. Or for an anniversary? That's a great idea. So, if somebody were to call up and say, I need to do a blessing for an anniversary, I'm just chewing, checking something. Do you, do you get the information and then contact the person who is the recipient? In other words, the person that's having the 50th anniversary, do you contact them? It depends what the person who's calling me wants. You know, I want to gift them with a reading, or it's my parents' 75th wedding anniversary. I like a, a, you know, a blessing card made for them 
based on wow. and then they could tell me so you about their marriage. So you can do cards or you could do actually do a blessing for them. Yeah, it would be more the experience of the reading would be the blessing. Yes. Or if you just wanted to do a blessing yourself, you could read about the cards, you could read the chapters based on on how old or whatever, how many years. So somebody's their fifth anniversary, you could read in the book about the letter Hay, and there's a, a psalm or a poem in there. You could use that, or you, you could just be inspired by the image. Well, now, on the birth of a child, you could do their birthday. You could, what about that? You could do the name, too. Or you could do the name. And I can do uh, just like with the name of the person who called me. So that would be, in a way, a blessing. Their name could be a blessing. Then I would create an image for them. That would be a lovely gift to give someone to bless the child mm. on, the, on the birth of the child. Do you do, um, do, you do political things? Uh, what do you mean by political? I don't know. I mean, if somebody's saying, um, you know, what needs to happen, um, with so and so, <laughs> you know, you could pull a card and and interpret it. I mean, you can interpret any card to be anything you want. It's a doorway to your own imagination and your own uh, innate wisdom. Or do you record any of these? It can be recorded. Zoom can you can record, or the person can record. Sure. You have your own Zoom account? Um, I can get one. You know, I've done a lot of work on Zoom. Yeah. And the like, of course, I, you know, we all have. And <laughs> what choice is there? But I'm not, I'm not the best friend of Zoom. You know? We can do Skype. We can do FaceTime. <laughs> I like Skype even less. Uh, whatever, guess, whatever, whatever media. Works. Right, yes. whatever and now works. That now that things are freed up, as long as somebody's vaccinated, they could come to me and, and we could And either, there's we could, FaceTime, there's all, all different. But we can meet in person, too. You yeah. Know, that's, that's possible. That's a, that's a wonderful thing. Do you ever do readings in groups? In other words, if your congregation were having some kind of a public event, could you do readings there so that a person could go and get a reading? Oh, yes. Why not? If somebody invited me to a party, I could or, go to a party. Or if you had... Kind of gathering. People can contact me. Um, you know, it's interesting. It's entertaining. It's right, fun. Right. It can be deep. It can be funny. Right. I, you know, I, I know that tarot readers do uh, parties and yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. And, but I, I have not. I have not. I had, I had, um, I guess, two dozen friends. I was in Virginia, and I was just beginning to learn tarot. So, I, you know, I asked my teacher, and uh, she came, and she did the readings, and she was charming. You know, she did all the right things. But, uh, you know, it does tell the truth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that was an interesting experience because it was not, it was, you know, it was entertaining, but it still was challenging at the same time. And I, I never really have done that. But I think that this would be absolutely, especially when you could do one card. Sure. Now, does some, could somebody just like choose a card out of the deck? Yes. yes. Wow. Yeah, there's different. So if you, if you just say, well, I want a reading. I don't even know what I'm, what I wanted. I don't know. I don't really have any questions. I don't know what to ask. So you can just shuffle the cards and just pick a, you know, like they'd go, okay. Well, okay. Oh, you know, I got a tree in the backyard <laughs> and I think it needs to be trimmed. And I could tell them a really good person to get their tree trimmed, tree you trim, know. <laughs> I know, you know, when you or maybe I want to work on my garden. Oh yeah, you know, I gotta pull the weeds. I mean, it could be something simple like that. Some of these cards I definitely recognize, but it's very interesting because some of them look brand new to me. And of course, 
part of the reason that they look brand new to me is because I am seeing them for the first time. I mean, I've seen them before, but I'm looking at them in a different way this time. You know, this card is so attractive. What is, what is the story? What is the mission of this card? So Tzadi is very similar to the word Tzadik. And a Tzadik is a, per, is a righteous person. A righteous person is one who does right. And a tzaddik is somebody whose eyes are always open, looking to do good in the world. And everything comes from his or her heart. And that's why this palm tree, this date palm, has all these eyes right. on it. Right. And then the and all of the leaves from a palm tree come from its center. There's no branches coming off of another branch like other trees. All the branches come from the center. And in the psalm, it says that a righteous person grows in the court of God uh, like a date palm. And they flourish even into their old age. They, they bear fruit. And a righteous person is always doing good, even into their old age. They keep doing good. Yeah. That's the most beautiful card. Thank you. There is another card here that has really uh, captured. I remember oh, this card. Yeah. But I, what is what is the story of this card? Ah, okay. So let's. So Tav is the last letter of the Aleph Bet. And it is the first letter in the word for Torah, which is teachings. And this moment, and, and the word emet means truth. So the, the word emet has all the letters from Aleph to Tav. And the, and the other letter is Mem, and that's in the middle of the letter. So it, it encompasses everything. And it's a, the letter Tav is also a seal. So this is the moment when the Torah was given at Mount Sinai and there was all this lightning and thunder and smoke coming out and fire. And so all you see, in, you know, the infinite spiral and all these letters churning up and creating the Torah and creating the law of good behavior that we all should follow for, for peace to come. And that's what this... And then you see the little yuds rising up that's the most beautiful card yeah I, I, I did this in pastel and I'm, I'm very fond of this one so and then and then the tzadi also that they were they were very easy they just kind of flowed right out of me this one this one totally has me captivated what, uh, what is nun. it about that one nun is the letter of emergence because Nun in Aramaic is fish. And I was, that, I was really stuck. How do you express emergence visually in a still frame? So I, thought, I finally thought about in, the, in creation, the waters had to separate in order for the land to emerge. And that's that moment when the little baby uh, earth peeked up its head from all of the water. Yeah, that's an amazing card. That is and that, that's, yeah, it's this big, it's a big piece of felt, and uh, I made it, I made the felt and arranged it, and then my daughter photographed it. And this one, this one is luscious. This is a very funny story, how this one came to be. I bought a frame, uh, a Mexican frame uh, that has depth to it, yes. you know, like a little shadow box. And at the top was, I don't know, there was like a tree or something. And then there were two birds on either side. And I looked at the form of the frame and that dictated. <laughs> the picture that went in it. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so I saw within it a tree and then two birds on either side. 
And Chet is Chai, like L'chaim, to life. So I said, okay, a tree is fully alive. And there's birds on the tree. And they're singing to each other. They're a couple. And Chet is also the, uh, the first letter in the word Chuppa, which is the wedding canopy. So I had to make it a willow tree so that the willow acts as the chuppah for the birds. So How they're getting beautiful. married and they're singing to each other. And they're fully alive and they're blossoming. And, yeah. and, and it all came from looking at the picture frame. <laughs> well, that's... That was how that So, yeah, how the images came. This one, um, I had originally done a watercolor in 1981. And I was really stuck on how to do the letter bet. And then one day, my eyes went towards this painting. And I said, aha, that could be bet. Because bet is bara, creation. Create. And here she's holding the world in her hands. She's creating the world. And I like to think that the act of creation, you have to have playfulness, but I like to think of God as this playful little girl with her, you know, ponytail bobbing up and down and and just, you know, her loving hands. She's holding on to all this energy and then she creates the world and these flowers of come up because she's so creative. You know, and this is then in felt. Our, our planet has gone through so much in the last few months. Mm. What, what does your deck have to say about our pandemic? Well, each chapter actually has a message that it seems like every year there's some kind of trauma to the earth. So I always kind of talk about healing in, at the end of many of these chapters. So it's, it's in there. It's within the book. Because this deck is about healing and about doing good and about becoming a better person. And that's why I just totally immersed myself in the project because through study, I became a better person. And there's a lot about my life and my process in the book, but in a general way that everybody can relate. I hope. <laughs> so you see the pandemic as, as healing? That we need, that the response to the pandemic is, is healing. That the pandemic, I personally believe, is a result of all the torture we've done to this planet. Yeah and then things get out of balance. Yep. Really out of balance. And then it's like spirit said, now go to your room and don't come out <laughs> <laughs> until I tell you. <laughs> and I'm not sure we got the go ahead yet either. Uh. That's, you know, but, but it is, it's been, it's been a kind of, a, of an enforced healing time. I think when you're forced to go inside, you know, go to your room, you go to your room and you, you know, you have to look inside. I mean, if I do, you know, it's, it's, uh, that is the med that's what meditation is, is going inside. And when we go inside, we see what's there and we do some spring cleaning. Now, does your deck talk about the future? No. No. It, it talks about, it's, uh, there's prayers for peace in the future, but that's about it. Um, I'm not a psychic, and I would never make a prediction. Um, what, I, what I offer is hope. I think that's all we can do, is hope and have faith and know that we're loved. That's interesting that you should use that word hope. I've been, I have been working with that word hope now for a while. I, uh, during the winter, I guess, or the spring, I got, I designed some t-shirts. Well, I didn't design them, but I, they're out there and I, I, at the flea market and I sell them. 
that uh, hope is the central word. And in, in dealing with hope, I am beginning to realize that hope is what you have when there's nothing else. That's all you have. When, when things have fallen apart and you are trying to make sense of being at the end of the road, hope is the word. And this is the word that I have been coming to in these last few months is hope. And for a lot of people, hope is something that you have when you have no future. So, do you have a card that talks about hope? Well, I would say how oh, would be would be that because we're looking towards the future to the time of Mashiach. Where is that card? Ha oh, which is that's that one. which is the blank. Yes. Yeah. 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 But I want to tell you, you know the word amen? No. Amen. Amen. You know, amen. Da -da -da -da, yes. And you go, amen to that? Yes. It means so, so may it be. Yes. And it comes from the word emuna, which is hope. Really? Yeah. So. Or faith. So, faith, hope, so, they're, they're very, they're syn synonymous. When, when I think of amen, mm -hmm. then I think that's at the end of the prayer. Mm -hmm. and what That's you the are, seal. Yeah. So what you are saying is that when you have amen, you also have a letter of the Torah. You have a letter of the Aleph Beit? Yes. Well, the, those are, their amen is Aleph Mem Nun. Amen. Aleph Mem and where's the nun? Where did the nun go there? Amen. So you could look at that, and what does that say to you? What is, what is? Well, here we have the emergence. Right. This, this most powerful, gorgeous thing. Yeah. So then we can combine the most salient elements of each card to create amen. And that can be your image of hope. That's very interesting. So emerging, and there's the there's Miriam's well, in her merit. You know they're going through the desert. What did they drink? They drink water from her well. Yeah, yeah, and it came up because they had faith. How could they have gone through? It took great amuna. And then Aleph is the primordial energy, and you have to connect to that, to the energy of, of energies, of all creation. So it's really a very powerful, very powerful image. So if we have Amen, that's primarily a Christian term. It's also Hebrew. Amen? Amen is, he Amen is Hebrew. That's why I'm taking these letters out. A-M-E-N? Yeah, but in Hebrew it's Aleph Memnon. How would Amen. you write that? Aleph Mem Nun. So you would write A L E P H M E M N U N. Amen is in Hebrew is Aleph. We we go from right to left. Ah, okay. So Aleph Mem Nun. Oh, and the other thing in these let in these cards are the colors. So you see a lot of yellow. Yes. And yellow is happiness and friendship. And it's the color of the sun. I think this is the most amazing. Mm -hmm. I, I really am so taken with that card mm -hmm. and with this one. Inside. I'm just so taken with it. Oh, there you go. And these are also, we print them. We print them larger on canvas or metal, any size. They are just, they are incredible. So what emerges from faith, you see? What emerges from faith? The waters are underneath. You have to know that below mundane reality is a miracle. And it's all fueled by primordial energy of creation. Amen. <laughs>
<laughs> Amen. Do we have enough minutes to do any kind of a one card reading? Sure. We haven't done a reading. You and I have just Well, we just sitting. did. We just, we just did. did. We just did. Yeah. And we can go into that more if you'd like. Because you were talking about you have this this t-shirt. Yeah. So what what um what uh motivated you to create the t <laughs> to have the t-shirt? I it was in the winter and it was in the pandemic. And Lucy and I just, I mean, it was like the end of the world. It was so difficult for so many people. Mm. And so we use the word, we use the word hope. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we came up with. And I came up with, I have three t-shirts that have hope on them. And I'm wondering, is there another word? Is there a Hebrew word that I could use? Um, Instead of, um, uh, what could I use for hope? What Hebrew word? Well, hatikva means hope. Hatikva is the national anthem of Israel, and Israel wouldn't have existed without hope. Because oh, that's amazing. Yeah. That is amazing. Hope is like a miracle. Well, Israel was a miracle. Oh my goodness. 2,000 years. I remember my father saying, it was like a dream. Who thought it would really happen? And then it did. Yeah. And then he, he went there. And then he helped build the economy there. Yes. And he, and he got to shake Golda Meyer's hand. <laughs> <laughs> like, he was so excited about Israel, about the hope of Israel. Well, Israel's still working on hope. Mm -hmm. Always to improve. Always making things better. Well, what, what can we say? Is there a card there that it says love? Oh, sure. Aleph is Ahava. If you notice... That's the heart. Yeah, there's this heart. Ahava starts with Aleph. Okay. Because think about what what created the world was incredible love. Oh, that's the first card. Yeah. That's the letter of silence. From silence was born all these other letters. Wow. And what is this word again? Ha'ot, ha which means the letter. The letter that we don't know. We don't know what the it unknown. is. unknown. Yes, the 23rd the letter. They call it the 23rd letter, Ha'ot. What is this one? Shin. Shin, which has three prongs. And it's three prongs, you think of a seesaw. Yes. Right? You have the fulcrum, and then you have the two sides. Yes. And they're always working at balance. And that is the first letter in the word Shalom, which means peace Hello, goodbye, and shlomim is, is completion. So when you say, how are you? You say, ma shlomech or ma shlomcha. You're literally asking, what is your peace? Now, what motivated you to put that on your cover, that symbol? Well, this is from the letter He. Okay, so this is from the letter He, which is the hand. And my hands are always busy creating. And this is, lesson, this is lesson five. That's the numerical value of the letter H. Right, right. Because back when the letters were developed, there was not a separate <clears throat> number system. We didn't have Arabic numerals. So the letters were also numbers. So each, each word is a numerical equation. So you can add up the numerical value of each letter in your name and then have yet another, another you know, you have a, a total number and then that would be different letters. Now, when you, when you do Zoom, uh, what is behind you? My, where I live. 
I know, but you, you're bound to be in front of one of these. Uh, some of some of my images, um, my library, my art supplies, my fiber, my beads. You don't, you don't, because I know that when I do Zoom, I like to be in front of um, some plants. Oh, I have plants too. No, I mean I, I was, I, I was thinking, cases. I was thinking that you would be in front of, you know the. Because I know you have these, yeah, and they on, are large. It's on, yeah, it's on the wall. They are yeah. large. Yeah, yeah. So that when people contact you to get readings, they see these large yeah. things behind you. Because these things are big. They're beautiful. Yeah, the, the biggest one is the Lamed. Do you remember seeing that? Yes. That was on, it's wool felt. And the substrate is a potato sack. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I, I remember that. I am a recycler. I believe well, in recycling if, and if, reusing and repairing. If you are an artist, you are recycling. Well, do we have, what is the wisdom of the letters from heaven? It opens up. To everything, everything there is, because any word has to be spelled with those letters. The letters are the building blocks of all creation. And you can build your life through the letters. What is this? Ion. I know, but what does this mean? This Ion, is the tree. Yes, the first letter for the word tree is eight, and it starts with the letter Ion. And I, if you notice the way the branches yes. come, it looks like the letter Ion, which is why yeah. I chose to do the illustration. It, it comes from the word Ion, which means I. And I was looking at the leaves, and I realized leaves look like eyes. eyes. So it's like God is looking at us from all those leaves. From all those yeah. leaves. Yeah, yeah. So this it's insight. Is, this is the most, this has been so delightful. Well, thank Can you. Can we speak for a minute before uh, it's over? Because we'd like to know how to get in touch with you. Yes. Um, and good. can can people get copies of the book? Yes. Um, you can also, you can go to uh, Letters from Heaven, the book. Letters from Heaven, the book. Yes. Dot com. Yes, dot com. Okay. Letters okay. from Heaven, the book. And also on Facebook, Letters from Heaven, the book. Okay. Yes. And Abigail Landsman on Facebook. Okay. And Instagram. I'm there. Okay. So, but if a person wants to contact you. And we also have decks. We also sell the decks. Okay, that was my next thing. If they want to get them, do they order? Do they go to the book and order them? That's really what they have to do. Like, like they go to the website. Okay, and then they can order from the website. Okay, and they can order either the book or the deck, or they can do both. Get a combination, and of they the can both also together. book a a reading with me. Okay, or they can um, they can book some classes. Sure. Okay, are some consultations? Yes. Okay, well, these are lovely. All righty. Well, listen, thank you. Well, thank you. Very, thank you very, very much. much. It was a lot of fun. It as always. has been. It's been fabulous. I, I, it, this, the, the pictures are so gorgeous. Okay, let's hold up a picture. Let's hold up a picture. Here we are.